Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Airlift Load Lifter Air Helper Springs here on our 2021 Ford F-150. Adding Air Helper Springs here to your F-150 is going to be an excellent option if you do a lot of towing or hauling. Now there's many types of suspension enhancement systems on the market. Airbags, however, in my mind are the best and they're also the most popular. I'm sure you're asking yourselves why are airbags the best? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The reason airbags are the best is because they're adjustable. We can adjust the air springs either individually or both together. And what that really allows us to do is it really allows us to fine tune our suspension so we can get the best mix between support and comfort. Therefore, no matter what load we have, we're gonna be able to fine tune those settings via adjusting the pressure inside each of the airbags. That way we always get the best mix, as we said, of the support and comfort. So we don't have too rough of a ride, but we still have a suspension that will properly support our load. So here's what our air springs look like installed on the vehicle here. And if we hold up our factory Johns bumper that, that they replaced, you can see there's quite a big difference in size, not only the height, but also the width. Therefore, we're going to get much more support here with our airbags up to 5,000 pounds. Being able to adjust and fine tune that suspension for our specific load is really a game changer. So we get a lot of questions here at E-Trailer. People who are towing with their trucks there, they just installed a set of timber and springs, for example, and they complain of a rough ride. Unfortunately, that's sort of the trade-off of increasing the support of your suspension here. In order to provide more support, we do have to increase the rigidity and stiffness of the suspension. And what does that do? It obviously is gonna to translate to a rougher ride inside the cab there. So really having the ability to fine tune both of those, it's gonna be the best of both worlds, which is why airbags are the most popular options, especially here on our F-150. Another popular option F-150 owners like to use to increase the support of their suspension are a product called Timberin Rear Enhancement Springs. Now, these simply just replace the factory jount springs with a much taller and rigid spring to provide support when we're towing or hauling. And these are great, they do work well, but there's gonna be a couple downfalls of these when compared to airbags. Number one, you're actually gonna to have to sag a couple inches before they'll even engage. Therefore, the airbags are gonna engage instantly and we're not gonna have as much sag. And we also hear a lot of complaints about the timberins being very rough, even when you're unloaded, because when you hit a bump or something and those timberin springs engage, it's gonna send sort of a jolt through the vehicle. With airbags there, you're gonna have a completely factory-like ride when you're unloaded because you can just simply deflate the airbags. Therefore, airbags really are the best option. They do, however, require a little bit of maintenance and the installation is gonna be a little bit more challenging compared to an option such as the timberins. So it really just comes down to your needs. If you just want something you can set and forget, you don't have to worry about any maintenance, but are okay with a little bit of a rougher ride, then the timberins might be a good option for you. But if not, if you really want to play with your suspension here to get the best mix of support and comfort, then you really can't go wrong with airbags. One of the biggest benefits we're going to gain by installing a set of suspension enhancements on your vehicle when you're towing or hauling is increased braking. Now I'm sure you're probably wondering how that actually works. Well, when we place a heavy load in the rear of our truck, whether that's in the bed or we couple a trailer to the trailer hitch, we're going to be transferring the weight from the front axle to the rear axle. Now, by doing this, we're going to be severely decreasing the braking force because most of it is actually going to be coming from the front axle of our vehicle, about 60% on most trucks. So when we take all that weight off the front axle, we're going to be reducing the effectiveness of our brakes. And it's really going to be a lot harder to slow your rig down when you're loaded or hauling a heavy trailer. And if you tow frequently enough without any suspension enhancements, you're going to start to notice irregular tire wear here on your front tires. Now, a reason for this is again, we're transferring that weight from the front axle to the rear axle, therefore lifting the front of the vehicle and altering the camber and caster adjustments of our front tires here. So if you tow enough, you're actually going to be replacing your tires, your front tires much sooner there due to those irregular tire wear patterns. And if you do any towing at night, you're also probably going to notice a lot of other motorists shining their brights at you because they think you have yours on. However, that might not be the case. You're just shining them in the eyes because the headlight angle isn't necessarily ideal for the road. With the rear of the truck sagging, the front of the truck coming up, you're going to be shining your headlights directly into other motorist eyes which is not only good for them, it's also not giving you the best view of the road. Last but not least, 
We're going to be increasing the strain on our rear suspension by towing or hauling frequently without suspension enhancements. Therefore, adding those is going to preserve the life of our rear suspension here, cutting down on the amount of money we have to spend on maintenance. You guys have heard us talk about the airbags and how they're great, but and really to order drive it home with you guys, I think a visual just to show you guys the improvements that we can make of our suspension by adding these is really going to be great for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure our factory unloaded suspension here. We're going to take the measurements from the ground to the bottom edge of our wheel well here at the front and rear. And then we're going to compare those to both with weight in the bed and our stock suspension and then weight in the bed with our airbags to see if we can get back to the factory ride height. So we're at the rear here and again stock suspension unloaded. The distance from the ground to the top bottom edge of the wheel well there is going to be right at 41 inches. Now let's jump to the front and measure there as well. And at the front here we're looking at about 37 and a half inches. So now as you can see here, we got our truck bed loaded up with about 1500 give or take here. So we're going to go ahead and retake our measurements now, the factory suspension. At the rear, I believe we were at 41 before and now we are down to about 37 and a half. So pretty significant drop here in the rear. Now we'll come up to the front here. And if you remember before we were at 37 and a half inches. It looks like our new height is 38 inches, so we did come up a half inch or so. And believe it or not, those can have some pretty big effects here on our truck. So we're out on our test course here at E-Trailer. We're going to start off with the speed bump course to see how she handles with our water tank in the bed. So not terrible. I can definitely feel that load jumping around a lot back there. Um, there's definitely a lot more give in our suspension there side to side. So now we're on the slalom course here and this is where I think we're going to see the biggest difference. So yeah, I'm really not going that too fast and those evasive maneuvers, if somebody like cuts in front of you, you need to get over quick. That's really going to end settle the truck and trailer. You're definitely going to notice a lot more body roll than you would normally. I can definitely feel the back and the front of the truck sort of just swaying back and forth. So definitely a decrease in stability. So the first step of our installation, we're going to need to get a 13 millimeter socket with a six inch extension. And we need to remove the factory jount spring, which is this device here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our socket with our extension. We're going to slide it through the center of the jount spring, and then we're going to begin loosening it. Now there is lock tight on that bolt there, so it's going to be kind of hard to break free. But once we do get it broken free, it should be pretty much smooth sailing. To remove it, once that bolt comes out, the jount spring bumper is going to come out as well. In that same hole there, we're going to be taking our M10 flange head bolt that comes in your kit. We're going to be threading this into that weld nut in the frame there, just like so. We're going to thread it all the way up until we have about a half inch between the frame and the flange on our bolt. Next, we're going to take our upper bracket here. This one's going to be labeled L for the driver's side because that's the side we're working on. So we're going to pass it up over here. There's going to be a keyway in the bottom of the bracket. We're going to slide our bolt head through and then we're just going to push it against the side of the frame just like so. Then we're going to take a 15 millimeter wrench there. And we're going to begin tightening that bolt there while we hold the bracket to the inside of the frame. So our instructions do call for us to tighten and torque this bolt down to a specification they list. But as you're going to find out, there's really no room to get a wrench on there. You might be able to use a crow's foot and fight it, but I really don't think that's going to be worth the trouble. We're just going to tighten this down as best as we can to the specifications and the instruction going by feel. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to have one bolt here holding our ABS line bracket to the spring perch. We're going to go ahead and remove that now. And we can just pull this out a little bit in order to let the bracket hang freely. So next we're going to turn our attention to the bracket here. 
It's attached to our axle. So if we just follow this brake line from that bracket we loosened up to this bracket here. So on the very end here, you're gonna have a wiring harness, which is sort of held on to the end of the bracket. It's gonna take a pry tool. And we're just going to remove that just like so. We're gonna to try to position this out of the way as best we can because the next thing we need to do is we actually need to trim that bracket. So we went ahead and jumped on the other side of this bracket here so we can give you a better view. So you're gonna be looking towards the rear of the truck now, but you can see I made a little black line there on that bracket. There's a pretty much a keyway slot right there. And we're just gonna be taking the edge of that off and just flushing that up like so. So if you have a Sawzall, I think that's gonna be the best tool for this, or we could possibly sneak a Dremel in there as well. Just whatever you guys have available but we do need to go ahead and remove that material. And there we go. That's the tab that we had to remove. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lower bracket. It looks like this. These are not side specific, but we're just gonna go ahead and just roughly place this into position now. So you're gonna have to move this harness out of the way So it looks like we're almost there. I'm actually hitting on that bracket a little bit more. So it turns out we're probably gonna have to take out a little bit more than I thought, maybe another quarter inch or so. Again, this kind of vary by insulation. This isn't gonna be the exact same for each one. So when you're test fitting your lower bracket, keep in mind, you may or may not need to come back and take a little bit more out of that main bracket. So we went ahead and removed some more of that bracket there. We were able to get our lower bracket into position. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure the distance from the top of the bottom plate to the bottom of the top plate. And it looks like ours is probably about six and a quarter to seven inches. So in which case we're gonna be using the included spacers that come in your kit here. If your measurement is anywhere from six and a quarter to seven and a half as it states in the instructions, then you will need to use the spacer. But if yours is less than that, then you would go obviously just go without the spacer. So now we can go ahead and remove that lower bracket that we just test fit, because what we're gonna be doing now is attaching our air spring to this bracket and then we can set it on the vehicle. But for starters, we're gonna take one of our carriage bolts here. We're gonna place this through the front hole on our bracket. So this one is gonna be on the driver's side. It's gonna insert like this. So the front hole is going to be here, just like that. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our air spring here. I'm gonna flip it over. We also wanna make sure that the inflation port is facing the inside, sorry, it's facing the inside of the vehicle. So when we set it on the lower bracket, it needs to be facing in this direction. What we're gonna do next is, we're gonna place over our roll plate. The rolled edge is facing down towards the airbag. Then we're going to stick on our included spacer, line everything up. And then we're gonna take our bracket here. We're going to install it on the bottom of the air spring. You may need to hold that carriage bolt in the forward two slotted holes here. So if you were to go set that on the vehicle here, just like that, we could easily see that these two holes here are gonna be in the forward two slots. But once we have that matched up, you're gonna get two different size bolts in your kit. These are gonna be the separate bolts, the fine threaded bolts that attach the bag to the brackets. So we're gonna take on a split lock washer and a flat washer. So there's two different sizes of these bolts. The smaller bolts is obviously gonna be used for the applications without the spacer, but if you have the spacer, you're obviously going to need to use the longer bolts. So we're just gonna go ahead and loosely thread these on now once we get everything lined up. Like I said, we're just gonna be threading it on by hand. Take our other one here and just do that same thing. Now you do have a pretty good diagram in your instructions. I'll admit, uh, the first time looking this over, I was kind of confused on the orientation. So I'm sure you guys are gonna be as well. So just take your time, use the instructions there as a guide and just sort of hold it up to the vehicle visually. That way you can see that you're putting the hardware in the correct places. So yeah, so, so once I got both of those hand tight, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take the air spring assembly, just sort of visualize how it's gonna install in the truck there. These are gonna go around the spring perch I have the bag towards the front along with my carriage bolt, so I know that's correct. What we're gonna do next is, 
we're going to take the inflation port that comes in your or the inflation valve that comes in your kit and thread it into the inflation port on the top of the bag. So we're just going to tighten it by hand as much as we can and then we'll use a 7 16 inch socket or wrench rather we'll tighten it an additional turn turn and a half we need to let our axle suspend a little bit from the vehicle to give us more room between the axle and the frame so we're going to be taking a pull jack here and just jacking it up by the trailer hitch we don't need to lift it very high just enough so we can get our air spring assembly into position so now we're ready to set the air spring assembly on the vehicle. I think I'm actually going to come in front of the axle there. Maybe. Actually, I think we're going to come this way now. This seems like a little bit better path. But basically, we just need to come up over the axle here, line everything up. And then we can just place it into position like so. So now that we have the air spring assembly into position, I'm gonna go ahead and re-secure this bracket here to the spring perch at the front or at the rear rather, using our self-tapping screw that comes in your kit here. So you're just gonna go ahead, line up the slot on that bracket, and then we can insert our screw through there. And on the back, we're gonna be doing that same thing, except we don't have to worry about this bracket here. We can just attach the lower air spring bracket to our spring perch using the self-tapping screw. And as we said, we have another one on the back there, but we're just going to be securing the lower bracket to the spring perch. We don't have to worry about this brake line bracket. Then next, we're going to take one of our other carriage bolts, and we're going to slide that through the rear hole in our lower bracket, just like so. Then I'm going to take the axle clamp bracket. We're going to place that over the two carriage bolts. And then we're going to thread on our flange nuts. We have one that's going to go on each side. And then what we're going to do next is I'm going to take a 9 16 inch socket. And I'm going to begin tightening down both of these flange nuts to bring the axle clamp bracket to the bottom of the axle tube. And then we're going to torque it to the specifications and your instructions. But I will say we need to make sure that we tighten these evenly so we have the same amount of thread left over on each side when we're done. Switch over to our torque wrench here and torque it to the final spec. Next, we're going to take our other roll plate. We're going to go ahead and set that on the top of the air spring, line it up just like so. And I think at this time, I'm going to go ahead and remove our plug here. So now we're going to begin lowering the uh, frame of the truck here until we have about an eighth inch of a gap between the bottom of the plate and the top of our air spring. We're going to align the air spring as best we can. There's going to be a little half moon shaped cutout in the top of that upper bracket that's going to line up with our inflation port. But we got about an eighth of an inch between there. So now we're going to take our hardware for our bag. So we're going to have the smaller hex bolt here. We're going to place on a split lock washer and then a flat washer. Now there's going to be two slotted holes in the top of our upper bracket here. They're going to, in theory, line up with the threaded holes in our bag, but we also have to go through the holes there in the roll plate. Now I'll be honest with you guys, this one's a little bit tricky. So if you find yourself struggling too much, just go ahead and take a break, you know, get your mind off of it so you don't get too frustrated because I'll admit you are going to struggle with this a little bit. But basically what we're going to do is we're just going to try to line up as best we can that roll plate so all of our holes align. 
And we'll do that by using one of our fingers here at the top. You can kind of feel the holes. So you may need to adjust the airbag here a little bit, spin it, move it forward or to the rear more, just to line everything up. And then once we do feel we have it aligned, we'll take our hardware through the top here. We'll just go begin threading it in. So now we're gonna take our U-bolt here. We're gonna come up to the top of the frame. We're gonna come down on the section of the bracket closest towards the front of the vehicle. And you'll notice on either side there, there's gonna be an attachment hole for the U-bolt. So we're just gonna line it up, one on the inside, one on the outside. It is kind of tricky to get them both in there at the same time. There we go. Once we have them both in there, we're going to take our flange nuts. We're going to go ahead and begin threading that onto our U-bolt. Get one on the outside and there's one on the inside as well. So now we're going to begin tightening these both down. And again, since it's a U-bolt, we need to tighten evenly. So we draw it up correctly. We're going to be using a 9 inch wrench for this. And again, the instructions tell you to use a torque wrench to get these to a final torque value. But to be quite frank, there's just not enough room to do that. So we're just going to use our wrench and sort of play it by feel as we did earlier. And now we're going to take a 9 16 inch wrench as well as a 9 16 inch socket. And we're going to begin tightening down the four bolts that hold our bag to the bracket. Now, all of these but one, we're not going to be able to get with a torque wrench. We are going to be able to get the one on this side of the axle here. We can fit a socket over there and torque that to spec. The other three, however, there's really not much room. So again, we're going to be doing it by feel using an open-ended wrench. The one here on the bottom closest to the bumper is going to be particularly challenging. You're going to need to use the open side of the wrench and you're going to get about a quarter turn at a time there. You can see we just barely have enough room to get our wrench in there and tighten that. So that one's going to take you the most time because there's just not a lot of room to work. You may or may not be able to get the larger size of the wrench on there. You're probably going to have to tighten it quite a bit before you can fit that on there, but then you run the risk of getting that wrench stuck. So just use the open end inside. Just take your time, turn a little bit at a time. So the next thing we're going to do is install our ABS line bracket. So that's going to be this bracket here, sort of have that odd shape. And if you remember earlier, the standoff tab on the brake line bracket sort of went into that little cup shape. So that's actually going to match up with the bracket here that comes in your kit. We just simply slide that over like so. And then we're going to be positioning it with the tab down and securing it to the lower bracket here in that rearward slot. So this is kind of challenging because this wiring harness here is pretty stiff. So what I went ahead and did is I just attached the bracket to the cup here on our wiring harness. And then I just sort of had to pull out enough to where I could line up our holes here and insert our bolt. So we can just give you a little bit better view of what that looks like now. That way you can just replicate that same thing at home. And then once we do get it on there, we're gonna take a 9 16 inch socket and wrench. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that down to secure the brackets. So we do have one more bracket we need to install in your kit, sort of this angled one that looks like this. So when we were actually installing the airbags, this clip here actually still stayed, stayed connected to this little tab here. We actually didn't need to remove it for anything. Now we're gonna go ahead and install this spacer. Normally we could just leave it on there, but I wanna make sure that there's not too much tension on this wiring harness. So I went ahead and just unclipped it there from that tab. And I installed the spacer according to the instructions. This one was a little bit tricky to figure out, but basically we're gonna take the tab here. There's gonna be an oblong hole that's gonna lock into the connector here. So we went ahead and attached that to that bracket first. And then we just simply attach that to the bottom using the included nut and bolt that comes in your kit. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down with a 7 16 inch socket and wrench. And again, I'm sure that was a little bit confusing to you guys, but there's gonna be a diagram in your instructions that you can sort of reference along with pictures that we have here in order to get the correct orientation of that bracket. We're ready to run the airlines to our bag. So what we're gonna do is 
We're gonna take our coil here that already has our connectors molded on. I'm basically just gonna be finding the center point of that. So just line up your two ends there. And whatever the center point is here, we're gonna take a pair of airline tubing cutters or just a razor blade. We wanna make sure that we're cutting these lines as straight as possible. You can see there, that's a pretty good cut. So now we're gonna attach one of these cut ends here to our airbag. So those are push to connect fittings. So we're basically just gonna push it into the fitting and then pull it out to lock it in place. Once we have that locked in there, we're gonna go ahead and run these to the rear of the vehicle where we're gonna be mounting them. So I've got that in there nice and tight. Now we're just gonna take this other end here. I'm gonna route it on the frame rail all the way to the rear of the vehicle and the bumper where we'll be in mounting our inflation valves. So here you can see we have our airline ran. You wanna make sure that when we're directly coming off the bag that we leave ourselves enough room because the bag is going to expand and retract there. So make sure you give yourselves a little bit of a slack here at the bag. And then we just simply came up and over this bracket there's going to be a cross member for the spare tire. We went up and over that bracket. And then there's going to be another one of those right here. So we're using those brackets for support. And then we're going to have our wires coiled up and zip tied to some existing lines up in there. You want to make sure you give yourselves a little bit extra. Then we're going to come through the side of this loop here in the frame. And then we're actually going to be securing it to a pre-drilled hold here that's on the bottom of our bumper beam flange. Now, if you want to mount these up a little bit higher, you can certainly do though. You're just gonna drill a couple holes. A lot of people like to mount them sort of in the license plate area, but this method doesn't require any drilling. And in this particular case here, we're actually gonna be removing these to install a compressor. So we're just gonna be temporarily mounting these, but this is a pretty good place nonetheless. So all this hardware to secure the airline fitting is gonna come in your kit. You're gonna have a jam nut, a star washer, and then on the outside, you're gonna have a rubber washer, a flat washer, then another jam nut, and you'll just tighten those together to secure it to the body here. And then we're gonna have our cap as well. But we've got this side done. We're gonna go ahead and do that same thing on the other side, and then we can test everything out. Now we're gonna go ahead and inflate our system here. I'm gonna put about 50 pounds in each bag there, let it sit there for a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and spray all of our fittings down. That way we can determine if there's any leaks. So now once we have our airbags on, I'm gonna put that same weight we had earlier. We're gonna retake our measurements. And if you remember from before, we were at 41 inches for the rear. And if we take that same measurement, we're actually right back there at the factory ride height at 41 inches here at the rear. Now we're at the front here. And if you remember, our first measurement was 37 and a half inches. So let's see how close we've got to that. And we're at about 37 and three quarters, so maybe a quarter inch shy of where we were at factory. So now let's head back onto our test course here at E-Trailer and see if we can notice a difference. We're gonna start off with our speed bump course. So right away, I can definitely tell the ride is a little bit stiffer, but like I said earlier, you guys are gonna have that when you're increasing the support, but I didn't have as much jolting back and forth, so. A little bit rougher ride, but a little bit more support there with our load. And now we're gonna head over here to our slalom course, make some evasive maneuvers, get up the speed. Yeah, and the truck definitely feels a little bit more stable. Uh, we definitely don't have as much body roll, which is that rocking back and forth side to side. But as we mentioned earlier, one of the main benefits you're gonna see here from these air springs is gonna be the increased stopping power. But again, we really don't have a great way to show you guys that, but I'm sure if you get out on the highway there now that we have our airbags installed, hook up to your trailer, you should be able to notice a pretty substantial difference. And that's gonna do it today for our look at installation of the Airlift Load Lifter Air Helper Springs here on our 2021 Ford F-150.